We haven't done it for a while. I want you to pause the video and tell me about your first programming job. The one you actually got paid for. Was it an internship? Was it after college? If you didn't do the college thing, how did you break into industry? Did it pay well? Were the problems interesting to you? Were you working with great people? Were you flying solo? I've heard a lot of great stories about first programming jobs, and I want to hear yours. So pause the video right here and tell me about it in the comments. Go. Thank you for those of you who participate. I see the view count is a lot larger than the number of people that comment. So those of you that comment, I appreciate it. My first programming gig, I was still in college. We had a professor assemble a team of rock star engineers. I don't know why I was picked, to be honest. And he put us all in a room, gave us all this wonderful equipment, got this contracting gig. And we went to work and started cranking out code for this company we were contracting for. It was a lot of fun. Learned a lot hands-on experience. I thought it was like half of my education before I graduated was that internship. Uh, but there was a slight problem. We were over-promising. Okay. Oh yeah, we'll solve world hunger and we'll do it by Thursday. Jamie, can you do that? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a price to pay for all the awesomeness, all this excellent equipment, this awesome opportunity. I had to code till my fingertips bleeded. Bleed it? Is that a word? Or bled? There we go. I had to code till my fingertips bled. And it was fun. All right. I kind of relished on it because I was young and spry and thought, oh, this is what we do at programming jobs. We just program around the clock and ignore our family. And so I did that. And uh, it turns out I wrote a lot of crummy code. Right? When you're trying to hit deadlines that are unrealistic, you're just getting the thing out the door and hoping that it works. So don't, let's not even talk about correctness. And let's definitely not talk about efficiency. And so as we were throwing this code out, and our code was working well on small data sets, I finally said to my manager, I said, hey, uh, you know, I don't know if this code's actually going to perform well enough on large data sets. We're just writing a lot of code and shoving it out the door. And my manager said, well, Jamie, don't worry about it. Don't worry. We got plenty of money. We'll just buy you bigger computers. Now, I was kind of naive at the time. I thought, oh, yeah, of course. We're getting faster and faster computers. I'm kind of old, and back in the day, computers got faster and faster rather quickly. We don't see that as much now, but we definitely saw it when I was in college. And so, yeah, 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 buy faster computer, throw it at my problem, problem solved. And that kind of wore on me wrong, though. You know, the more I thought about that, I'm like, oh, that doesn't seem right. That doesn't seem right. Let me tell you the problem with that kind of mindset. We'll just buy more hardware. We'll throw hardware at the problem because we got money. We got money, but we don't have time, so let's spend the money by the hardware, and then you just crank out the code. Let's go to this graphing calculator I have here. We know there are different fraternities, sororities, clubs that algorithms can fall into, and they don't fall in between. They pretty much fall into these categories. Uh, let me just list these out. Don't blink. Okay, here's the most common clubs that we see. There's, this isn't all of them, but these are the most common ones we see. Here's quadratic. Here's linear, linear rhythmic. Uh, n log n, basically number of elements times the log of the number of elements. Here's linear, and here's logarithmic, and then there's constant time. By far the most common uh, clubs, for fraternities, sororities, I'm going to call them clubs. Uh, let's say I'm trying to throw code out the door as fast as I can, so I'm writing really crummy algorithms. n squared algorithms are not hard to write. In fact, generally the most obvious solutions will be n squared or larger, so I have to put x in here. You guys know that. Uh, I write this n squared algorithm. And let's say you take your time and think about the problem, and you're not so concerned about throwing the code out the door, and you come up with an n log n algorithm. So we'll do x log x, which is n log n. And then these other ones we'll just ignore for now. Let's get them off the screen. Hey, look at this. Look at this. For one item, I'm at one. Two items, I'm at four. Three items, I'm at nine. And so this is number of items here on the bottom. We've talked about that before. And then this is time. Time could be in seconds, milliseconds, nanoseconds, clock ticks. It's all relative to the hardware that you're operating on. But look, my, my n squared algorithm is performing horribly compared to yours. All right, but that's okay. That's okay. We can throw more hardware at my algorithm. Let's say we're going to check my algorithm on a computer that runs twice as fast as the one I'm currently on. Jamie, I'll buy a computer that's, that's twice as fast. We'll go to server that's twice as fast. Well, that means I need to divide this whole thing in half. So I'm going to say divided by 
two, and hey, look. <laughs> Did that really make a difference? We bought we bought a computer that's twice as fast, and, and it didn't really make a difference. In fact, here, let's put N squared back here. Oh, look, all right, the purple is what my algorithm was operating at, but we bought hardware that's twice as fast, which divides my time in half, and oh, man, look at that. And you know what's funny about this hardware? This hardware was super expensive. Okay, to get Jamie a faster, faster computer was just super expensive, and we didn't really buy that much time. In fact, if I zoom out here enough, the n squared and the n squared over two pretty much look the same. While your algorithm's just like, woohoo! And honestly, to buy your time was probably cheaper than buying this server because there comes a point in the hardware where you just need to squeeze a few more gigahertz out of that CPU and you're paying for it. You're paying a lot of money for it. I remember when I was in college, I wanted to buy this new laptop because my first laptop died and I, I, they had the, I think it was 1.6 gigahertz, I'm guessing, all right? It was 1.6 gigahertz laptop. And ooh, if you spend $500 more, you can get a 1.8 gigahertz. And I'm like, I want the top of the line. That last two point, that last point two gigahertz is worth $500 to me. That's such stupid thinking. All right, it's just getting a few more, ah, not worth it, all right? So thanks, manager man, for offering to buy me a computer that'll run twice as fast, but it's not gonna get us there. It's more ideal to get us more time and to pay me the money instead of buying the new hardware, pay me the money to uh, write an algorithm that's n log n. Look at all this distance here, all right? Now Google and all the Silicon Valley companies know this, all right? They know that if they can hire engineers that are skilled enough, then they will. They can't buy this with hardware. They can buy this with people, skills, and times, but they cannot buy this delta with hardware. It's physically impossible.